it's over to me now. Now, I have a message for all of those people criticising Donald Trump's inauguration speech. <laughs> to everyone saying that President Obama's version eight years ago was more eloquent, and more inspirational, you are missing the point. Donald Trump said exactly what Americans needed to hear. The new president was direct. He said he'd make sure that American workers were never ignored again. We are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving it back to you, the people. Every decision will be made to benefit American workers and American families. I will fight for you with every breath in my body, and I will never, ever let you down. Contrast that with Obama's focus on responsibility and virtue in 2009. We understand that greatness is never a given. It must be earned. The tempering qualities of humility and restraint, honesty and hard work, courage and fair play, tolerance and curiosity. What is required of us now is a new era of responsibility. After years of being left behind, American workers don't want to play fair anymore. They want to be put first. Donald Trump promised to do that throughout his campaign. He promised it again in the inauguration speech. That makes him, in my opinion, consistent, it makes him savvy, and it makes him the leader America wants. Um, well, for, I suppose from my point of view, it's looking at a couple of things in terms of, you know, the inauguration speech is, you know, it's a, it's a speech of show and, and, and showing what your, um, what your policies are going to be to an extent, what, how you see your, uh, your term um, and what defines you. And I think that comparing, you know, Trump to Obama, it's an unfair fight, really, because Obama's a great um, orator and commands, you know, um, amazing Charming, sort of power when he when yeah. he speaks is 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 incredible. Whereas Trump, quite frankly, you know, is is appalling in terms of a, a public speaker, um, with all of his little sort of hand gestures and and it, it sort of it winds people up. I think that that doesn't interest me really because that's you know the personalities are one thing, the policies are something totally different, and that part of Trump's rhetoric really does concern me. Because ultimately, it's a sen it gives me a sense that everything that America has worked for since, since it sort of began, yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> um, has been about, you know, embracing difference, bringing, bringing people in to make America a better place. And, um, and I just worry that, that now we're, we've turned that corner away from that. And, and, and ultimately, we're going to be left with an America that is much more inward looking, mm. um, which is, of course, may well benefit people in the short term. But I just look at him and I listen to him and I think he's living in a parallel universe. But he's you not. Know. He's not. He's living in the universe. The people who voted for him, they, you know, when in that speech, yes, it wasn't convoluted and flowery like Obama's was, but he was talking to the people who voted for him. He was talking, he was talking about the, what was it, rusted out factories scattered like st tombstones. He was talking about single mums. He was talking about poverty. He was talking about devastated families. He talked to the people that Obama had forgotten who had left behind, and he was inviting them back into the fold. And what he was saying is, you're the most important thing to me now. I don't care about all, all the rest of it. I care about you. And on that level, mm. it was a good speech. Not flowery words, you know, not a huge vocabulary. I get that. He's not the great speaker. But what he's done in that speech is consistent with what he promised to do. Look, I, look what he's done can, in the past. Carol, thank you for defending my, James, my piece, Carol. James, but I'm OK with it. <laughs> James, can I just say, actually... Everything he's done is completely <clears throat> inconsistent with what he described in his speech. So no. he's talk well, can I finish? Go. So he's talking about um, the establishment protected itself, but not for the citizens. But yet his cabinet is the richest cabinet in history. It's richer than even the founding fathers. It's a cabinet full of billionaires. Deal he's makers. talking. He's billionaires. He's talking, he's talking, no offence, James, I know you're very rich. He's talking about uh, the education system, but yet the person he's proposing to be education secretary, Betsy DeVos, wants to privatise okay. public education. I okay. mean, she is a he, very he... dangerous woman. And then when he's talking about um, companies sending jobs overseas, 
That's exactly what he did. Most of his products are made in China. It's like, uh, what? Are you kidding me? Okay, okay so, man so he said absolutely so, so the stuff deluded. he said he was going to do, he was going to ban various trade treaties. He's already banned the NAFTA no, treaty. He's in the process yeah, yeah, of banning yeah. the, the, the Trans-Pacific Treaty. But that the was war, already, he's the was the already war done. Was he had nothing to do mm. with that. It was already done. But, and then also, if well, we're the talking about... Mexico, but what, the first thing he said he was going to do, which is actually the important thing, was he was going to call out China as a currency manipulator. Hasn't done that yet. Well, he's I mean, only been in office a week, dude, to be well, fair. Well, he's done a lot since he's been in well, office in a week. Well, he has done a lot, yes. Oh, my God. Scary stuff. Let's get James, let's get James mm. because, this, James, this is your, your proposition. You are a Can I just Can I confer with Karen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, without doubt, are the, the, the biggest business figure sitting around the five of us right now. This yes. idea, it appeals to me, but you run businesses. If you want me, if you want to sell American cars, you build the cars in America. If you want to do this, it's quite, as Graham says, this is quite protectionism, this is quite insular. Can you run a country like that? I'm genuinely asking, yeah. can you run a country like that? Uh, I think you can. I, I think the reason why I picked this topic is mm. simply because I know all the controversy around Trump, because mm. and, and I get all of that, but actually I take a step back and I say, you know what, I like the fact that somebody is, is becoming the leader of that country and his focus is that country. Mm. And, the, and his comments resonate with me because he mm. says, look, you know, we worry about other people's borders, but we don't worry about our own. You know, we worry about other people's jobs. We, let me finish. We True. don't worry about our own. Mm. And actually, I'm fed up with countries wasting billions of pounds interfering with other people's issues, mm. other people's problems, mm. when their own issues True. on their own front door aren't working. So whether it's education, jobs, etc. So to me, it's a breath of fresh air where somebody says, I'm going to put you first. Mm. We need to get our house in order before we start wasting money on just, other people's issues. Can I issues? just add to his whole immigration rhetoric? I mean, again, my issue with Donald Trump, I mean, I have many issues Jude, with Donald Trump. he's banning Muslims. I'm a Muslim, no, right? So I'm saying to you, I get the point, but at the no, same no, time, no, no, my, if you get all these people swamping can, into your no, country... No, but can I finish, James? My point is, all the stuff that he's talking about, he hasn't actually lived it. Right. So he is not... This is a man who uses the word carnage to describe mm. his own country, a country that's made him a billionaire. Yeah. Let's not forget that. Then also talking about immigration and people coming here to work illegally. His own wife did that. And let's not forget, this is a man who's pro-immigration. Two of his wives were immigrants and so was his mother. So again, like, he's absolutely delusional. And to me, he's so dangerous. In fact, he's way more dangerous than we've thought. What scares thought. me is that yeah. he oversimplifies yes. the argument. Complicated that, that, that's issues. the problem for, that, that I have. I think the, the fact is that, you know... And it, I say to that, hallelujah, because he's not putting spin on it. He's not giving yes, you some political... Yes, he is. Political... Alternative no, he's, facts. He's what giving you... It is straight. It's, no, but in itself, it is spin, because, <laughs> because it's oversimplifying the facts. So, so therefore, it's a, it's, a head, it's, a, it's, a head, it's a headline without any substance. Cause, because the reality is, if industry is, 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 um, is, is, is failing in a country, it's because it's cheaper elsewhere. We live in a global market yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's based on cheaper products. That's what people demand. And he's saying, I don't so if, agree if, with that. If the Americans are prepared to pay more. way more... But they're going to have to. Well, but then friend, they're going to have to. Then, but, but he's not said that, is he? He's not said that. But, but he should by say default, that. By default, the reason why you buy from China, because it's cheaper, American wages are higher, American rents are higher, it will be more expensive. But, but I think fundamentally what will happen is the American people will then decide that if we want to be patriotic and we want to bring jobs back, we're going to have to pay mm. more for it. I and maybe accept. that's the answer. Jim, Graham, we are mm. talking the day after the Dow hit 20,000. Yeah, yeah. The first time yeah, in its But who does that benefit? That who does it history. benefit? It only benefits industry. No, but yeah, it only benefits it benefits the wealthy. That was, oh, that was Obama's question. groundwork. <laughs> on, that was that's... not Trump. You that asked... was Obama's oh, eight years. Obama that was not down. Trump. Obama goes down no, in history no. as the only US president who failed to deliver a certain amount of growth quarter after quarter. Three Obama percent. goes the down in history US as president. the US president that generated right. millions correct. of jobs. His figures on economic growth were the worst. No, they were not. Sorry, not. you can't what, just say what no you, you don't go on, like... Go on, say no. about, let's talk <laughs> about the significance of, uh, yeah. uh, uh, of the debt. This is a massive vote in America, by American business in America. But you cannot attribute that to Trump. He's been there a confidence is week. higher than it's ever been before because they think he's going to make a difference. Mm. For they the believe, rich. But, but For ulti them. And, and ultimately, the, the inve you inward investment... You need to move to America now, Of James. course, <laughs> inward investment is going to have the benefit of, of giving people confidence in what they're doing. But it's got to be, it's got to be based on reality. And the fact is, is that how is he going to regenerate 
all of those areas that have fallen by the wayside for 20, 30, 40 you. years now. I think it's going to be a massive challenge. Yeah. If he achieves it, well Graham, done. Graham, you are right, absolutely right, it will be a challenge. But they waste trillions of dollars, you know, interfering with everybody else in the world. If they stop wasting their money, interfering with other people's problems, and they spent that trillions of pounds on their own industry, on manufacturing, on jobs, on healthcare, it would be a better country. And that's why they voted for him.